I'm putting on helicoils on my 5.4 Triton. Actually, I had two on just one plug. And this nice little $25 kit uh, came from AutoZone. And um, it works. Um, you will want the longest coil that they come with. It's a three-quarter inch, and you can get some extras. They're M14 by 1.25. Uh, and, and, it, and it works if you get a little creative. Start with a tap. Uh, I'm told that this two-step tap is a good shape. It's very nice. Unfortunately, it's not long enough. Because when you drop it down that hole, you about lose it. Here's one of the real cruddy packs I pulled out. And so it's down in there about like this. You've got to get several threads down there into where the, um, the uh, plug is going to thread in, which means that the top of your tap is below the top of your, the hole in your head. All right. So what the instructions say about uh, running it with the square hole in the handle here, even if they gave you the right size square hole, it still wouldn't work because it's down too low. So you need a 12 point socket, 11 millimeter works. It's a 12 point deep socket, 11 millimeter. Get creative with your extensions to get it down there. Now, you're gonna thread it in. It's gonna go pretty easily on the first set of threads. You get it down in a little bit further and it gets tough. And, and I think that's normal. I think it's kind of enlarging the hole to cut the new threads. Uh, but you're going to have to put some pressure on it. You can pull the tap back out and uh, see how far you've cut. But you really are not in any danger of running it clear down through your head and losing it down there. Because you've got about an inch and a half, maybe inch and three quarters of threads here. So once you get to the hard part, you give it several more turns to get that... Um, you know, get that threaded. Now, I told you that this tap goes down in the hole to, so you can hardly even touch it. You must have your telescoping magnet. So when you, every time you pull that th uh, tap back out, you've got to reach down in the hole with this guy. I do not know any other way to get it out of there. Um, I'd like to show you another tool we improvised before I get to the big one. And this is on the end of the shop fat. Um, uh, we put on some uh, a garden hose chunk, just taped it up on there on the crevice tool so that uh, we can uh, put this down into the hole and suck out any debris. Um, certainly after, uh, uh, running the tap, there will be a few shavings. Um, um, this is the only way I know to suck that out of there. So, <clears throat> the tool they gave you won't work to run the tap because it's down, it, it's the wrong size square and it's down in the hole too far anyway. Good enough. You get the thing tapped. Then it's time to take your little tool. We're gonna take, wanna take the long one of these, but you know, put that in there. Only, we're back to the same issue. Your tool is not going to fit in far enough to uh, to get to the hole you tapped. So basically you need a longer version of this tool. You'll notice a, uh, a set screw. So that sleeve comes off and I think that's to um, uh, center a, a big one of these. Uh, and, and, and still be able to use a rather generic little handle. This handle um, has a, a 3 8 
diameter rod. So my solution is to take a 3 8 diameter rod and slot it to match the original. We're going to need some way to turn that thing. Now, I'm not sure exactly how long mine came out. It's about a 12 inch item that we did. Um, there are a lot of ways to make a handle on here. I thought of bending it over so I could just turn it that way by hand, but uh, my rod wasn't quite long enough for that. So we just threaded the end, put a nut on, and tack welded it on. Um, you could thread it farther and put two nuts on to use a jam nut if you don't weld, you know. Uh, but this 3 8 rod with a slot and some way to turn it basically makes a longer version of this commercial tool. The sleeve goes right on. And it, uh, it works. You can thread that thing down in there. Um, it feels real funny when you're threading it in because it's so springy. So as you're turning this, um, you know, you, you tighten it and then your ratchet doesn't want to take up, you know, click any teeth back to, to get another bite because it's so springy on these things. <clears throat> but if you hold it as you're going back, you know, you can get it. Last problem we had to deal with was breaking off the little tab on, on the, um, on the coils. Once you get that guy in there, you're supposed to break that tab off. Well, the instructions say, take it up and turn the tool 90 degrees and give it a good smack. So that's what we did with this, but we had to take the uh, sleeve off in order to do that because uh, it seemed to be uh, it seemed to be limited by by the sleeve. So with that off, you know, we'd run it in until it we were losing contact with it. Take it up. Turn it 90 degrees, and then smack it. It was real springy just pushing on it, but a little good little smack, and it seems to have uh, broken off the piece. It seems to have gone out of the way, and it feels like we got a spark plug installed. Uh, so basically we had to fabricate one tool and, and get creative with a few things. Um, I cannot overstate the importance of uh, your telescoping magnet. Um, if I could afford it and afford the time for it, I would get a bore scope for this job so I could actually take a look at what in the world is going on down there, but uh, that wasn't really an option for me. Caleb, did we, did we do anything else funny with the tools? I don't mm. think we did. No, you covered it. Okay. I did use red thread locker. Uh, the instructions on this don't say to do it, but um, other videos did, and we all know that if a video on YouTube says it, it has to be right. So, um, hopefully that's some help. Uh, I'm real sorry that your spark plugs got thrown out of your 5.4 Triton like they did out of mine, but I hope this helps. Uh, saves you a little bit of consternation. Uh, best wishes with it, and remember Jesus is Lord.